for my sins. I see. <laughs> Okay. So now let me announce the first lecture. It's a traditional monthly seminar by Jan Boronski from the Yellow University, since recently, but from Krakow now. And the title is The Pruning or Pruning? Yeah. Pruning. The Pruning Front Conjecture Wandering Domains and Classification of genomics in the prevalence of strange. Thank you very much. Um, so I wanted to start uh, thanking Felix for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, and I also wanted to add that I'm also one of the organizers, but since I could not be helpful with anything, I'm glad that Felix didn't mention it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Right. Um, so on in, in that role, I wanted to thank all of you for being here. Um, and um, what I wanted to speak today about is um, um, going to be about my joint work with Sonia Schlimatz. Uh, I think Sonia probably uh, joined us online. Um, so she also should be here. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is about some work we did in the last two or three years. So um, there's a lot of things that that um, are there, but I wanted to touch on on some of them today. Um, and so in general, it will be about the political dy dynamics of Henon Max. And then I wanted to ask Andre uh, because I couldn't remember if last week you mentioned anything about inverse limits. Mention, yes, that. yes, but you did mention, yes? I think I right. So I remember the Surface Dynamics Conference in Bend Level, and this was back in, I think, 2018 or something. Yes, some years ago. And uh, you had uh, one of the invited lectures, and you said um, at some point in the lecture, you mentioned that uh, now you have to talk about inverse limits because otherwise you wouldn't have got the invitation to speak for me at all. <laughs> so uh, just, just I wanted to affirm you that I will also speak about inverse limits today. Um, you know, just to kind of adhere to my own rule. Okay. Um, all right. We'll start, so I'm almost sure that everybody know what an on map is, but just to set the stage, I will state it anyhow. So this is about a parametric family of maps. So uh, this is a two-dimensional family of maps in the plane. And this is, uh, of course, it can be seen as an, uh, ex a two-dimensional extension of the quadratic family. Um, as you uh, all know, uh, this family uh, arose from a uh, two-dimensional reduction of the Lorentz attractor, um, you know, from his model of atmospheric convection. Um, and so then, of course, this started to be a, a uh, prototypical family of maps that exhibit strange attractors. So first, it was uh, uh, sort of like a, uh, a conjecture by Henon. So he did some, some computations, and it appeared like there is a strange attractor there. Um, this was, I think, around 1976. Um, and then, of course, it took some time before there was any uh, rigorous proof of it. And um, I will mention that background in a little bit now. And the, I mean, technically, there are no restrictions uh, on A and B. So um, people do consider various parameter parameters, but um, I guess primarily. Uh, sort of the world I will be interested in in this talk is 
is with A between uh, one and two. And of course, B being the absolute value uh, less than one, in fact. Um, so, so of course, this condition makes this family dissipative in the Gustav attractor there. Uh, but also, um, in fact, here I will uh, be focused on orientation reversing uh, maps in this family. Uh, so this is when, um, let me think, so this should be, we take the Jacobian, so it's uh, here it's minus, so it has to be positive, I guess. Okay, and so I wanted to mention some of the components that would be uh, important uh, here uh, for our work. Uh, of course, there are many, many results, very good results about Helon maps. There are some very recent uh, developments concerning uh, Helon maps by uh, Pierre Berger, and uh, there are some uh, great results by uh, Marco Martens, uh, Liviana Palmisano, Michael Benedicts, uh, and so on. So there are many, many results, and it's impossible to mention all of them as a background. But here I wanted to just mention some of those pieces that will come into play here. So of course, the first one is result by Benedict's and Council. This was from 1991. So um, this was the first breakthrough where there was a rigorous proof of uh, the existence of a strange attractor. So So uh, they showed that um, for a um, positive with that measure, set of parameters. F A B has a strange attractor. Uh, gamma, sorry, lambda. So it means that F restricted to lambda is transitive. Okay, and so, um, of course, that result that they have is so much stronger, but um, I guess this is just uh, uh, suggesting the way I, I will do my talk. So, so all that we do is really very topological. So we will not be very much concerned with, with, with numbers and and, and other things like that, um, what we do is, is, is very topological. So here, transitive, of course, means that there is a, a dense orbit. Okay, so... You may want to say that it, it's not a, a periodic orbit, for me. Sorry? You may want to say it's not a periodic orbit. Right, the attractor is not, yeah. yes. Oh, right, so one that, yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you very much, of course, this was meant to be said. So, and then the attractor is equal to the um, unstable manifold 
of the fixed point X. And, 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 and this unstable manifold of X is an embedded um, real line. And X is, is, the, is one, of the, one of the fixed points. That, yeah. So what you have is a fixed point here, which is in the uh, first quadrant. And the, the local picture that you have is um, something like that. In fact, it is an incomposable uh, continuum. So it doesn't contain any connected and complex subset that is um, uh, that contains an open set. OK, and, 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 and this consideration that they had, it was um, one of the things they considered was this, this disk D, which was determined by this piece of the um, unstable manifold. So, and then sort of artificially, there was just this kind of straight line attached here. And then this was the forward invariant disk. Okay, and so so this was like the first piece, um, and then of course there were many um, follow ups to this. But yes, so so the, the parameters a and b they are very close to a equal to two. Is that it or a what? A equal to two? No, no. B is close to zero. D is close to zero. Well, it's it is not far away from two. You can say so. I mean, and especially in, in sort of, it's assumed that it's it close. It's not. Well, I don't know. Actually, in, so I know in Tian Benjamin's the most recent results, he considered this case pretty close to four. Here, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Of course, not close to zero because. Uh, yeah, I think between one and two, I don't remember exactly that it should but be close to two. Yeah, it's going to have to be close to the to, to the full ocean. But it's not. Not yeah. close to zero in order to avoid attracting the I think in, in this most recent work of Hilbert, he does this with that, where he talks about strong regularity and Yopus puzzles. Um, but um, I don't think it was here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for asking about this. Okay, and then well, look at it as perturbation of one minus a x Okay, we are going to go. Okay, so then there was some work, you know, some years later, about 10 years later, um, there was a, sort of a systematization effort by uh, Wang and Yang, and they introduced this theory of rank one attractors. So rank one means that there is uh, one direction of instability. And, and, and okay, this starting point was in the plane, but then they generalized it to higher dimensions, in which case 
you know, if it's in n dimensions and you have one in, uh, unstable direction and n minus one stable directions. And so this was really uh, sort of a systematization effort of, of sort of uh, trying to um, extract as much as possible from, from this initial result of uh, Benedict's and Calphone. And one important feature of that um, that we are going to use here as well uh, is that here, um, when Benedict and Carlson uh, constructed, was well, considered the, the critical set, it wasn't really the critical set. There were just some critical points. But here, they were just choosing sort of some of them, you know, kind of depending on the rate, and, and it was it was happening very slowly. Whereas here, um, for the first time, the critical set was constructed. So uh, there is an isolation of a set of all the points in the tractor away from which you really have hyperbolicity. I mean, this set plus all, all, all its orbits, right? So, um, is young, young, or young? Yes, I see young. There is a critical set C. such that um, following set, lambda epsilon equal to the set of all those Z zero in the attractor lambda. So sometimes I'll be uh, surpassing A and B if, you know, if we don't really have too much. Such that the distance from the critical set of Zn, where Zn is just the iteration of Z0, greater or equal to epsilon of all n and z is hyperbolic, uniformly hyperbolic. And so this is why you can talk about the C as being a big critical set. Okay. So um, Another uh, piece that we're going to use is this notion of mind dissipation that was introduced just a few years ago by Corbusier and Pujals. So the mind dissipation um, is a property that allows to sort of reduce your two-dimensional map to a one-dimensional map. So these are maps that are in some sense close to one-dimensional maps. Uh, what is this notion uh, about? So you have some kind of map F, some surface, 
And so in their work, this was a, a PTO model with me. And then you require um, the following three properties. So first off, you want f of x to be um, contained in a compact subset of s. Second off, you want this map to be, of course, dissipative. And then third off, you want to have the following property for um, stable manifolds. So for Any erotic measure the Yes, exactly. So for any erotic measure me, which is not supported on a hyperbolic thing. For me, almost every point X. You want that. Two branches of um, the stable manifold of X So I think if I draw a picture, it will be better. So the situation is that you have some X. And then you have a stable manifold. So this is your S, and then say this is your F of S. And then when you remove this point, you want both pieces to actually reach to the boundary. And then, and I will explain that how you do that, then you can use these stable pieces um, to um, form a one dimensional reduction. Okay, so that's that's the third piece. And then the fourth piece is um, sort of a continuation of this that we did with Sonia. This was already a year or two years ago. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, I'm from on online audiences. Um, uh, do you ask that the both side of the both branches of stable manifold meet the boundary, or one is enough? Right, right. Both, both of them, right on the picture. And I apologize for for uh, writing it here. No, Thanks. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for asking. It's God talking to us. Oh, I see. Okay. Asking questions. Right. But this was right. online, online, yes? Uh, what? Oh, it's Sorry. 
when it's less than two, which is after a specific what does that mean? Here? Yeah. Oh, that the Jacobian is less than one. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay. okay, so I have a question because I, I before all oh, we talk about the dissipative in something else. So is this related to the Rentana's definition of dissipative? Like so everything is a wandering domain, or in this it's completely different. No, I think it's different. Okay. All right. Well, this implies a lot of measure zero. Two times two times two. Yeah. And one. For the example. Okay, so another piece here is, is this continuation of that work that we did with Sonia, Sonia a year or two years ago. So there we, we use this approach of, of Provisier and Quahath. I will explain that in detail. And we show that well, with good assumptions on the Henon map, it is conjugate to um, The shift on the inverse limit of densely branching trees. So here, T is a Density branching tree. And then F is just some continuous map on T. Okay, now sigma F is <clears throat> defined on the inverse limits, and you have some sequences of points. Um, just apply F to each element of the sequence. Right, and so what you get is a step to the right and introduction of f of x, y. Because you're in the inverse limit, uh, maybe I should also define that. Limit of the T and F is equal to the space of all sequences such that. F of X N plus one is equal to F, sorry, is equal to X N. Okay, and then I have two questions. What does it mean that it's not similar? The conjugate. Conjugate. Yeah. Conjugate. Topological conjugate. Another question about stable manifold. Do you have some non uniform This is the for the measure or what are stable manifolds for general topic measure? Of course, you can write form of the definition, but it's hard to understand if you don't have some non zero. But are you asking completely in general? Here, here you have some condition. This one? Yeah, here you will know something about stable manifold X. 
is how it is transformed for x. X is special point. Yes. Yeah. So for me, almost every x. So we yeah. So we take we fix our favorite ergodic measure b, yeah. which is not supported by hyperbolic sink. Uh -huh. And then for me, almost every x, we have this property. Ah, so for almost every x, for almost every x, you have a nice stable mean. Yes. At least locally. Right. Global like 20, so frameworks. Yes. Ah, so, okay, so you have kind of sort of the idea is one dimensional, two dimensional. Well, here it's right, it's it's one dimensional. One these are these are just arcs. I mean the intersections will do this. What action is what action exponential amount it or maybe weak attracted? Do you assume uh, I am asking about assumptions? This is the whole definition, nothing more. Uh, so it's very topological. Exponential It's it's not required for the results. Okay. What they want is that with the two branches of the same map, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I understand, but my question is mm -hmm. about what is state domain. Oh, these are hyperbolic point. Uh, no, well, uh, this is our vocabulary, which is not it's not right. And that's, that's what my question is. Is it only for the hyperbolic or what? And answer also not necessary. Well, is it maybe a hyperbolic measure? It's not a human. What? I know you're not a No, it makes sense, but that was my question. Right, this is formal, it makes sense. So that, that's the notion introduced by Crovis and Puhals, and this is how much they are sold. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yes. What is yeah. the, a densely branching tree is a dendrite. It is a dendrite, yes. So right. So somehow I so I'm not sure, you know, when it sort of um went sideways, but but you know, dendrite or however you pronounce it in French is just a tree. But somehow in the English speak, you know, English literature, from some point on it started to be a tree if it only has finitely many branches and a dendrite more general, it can have infinitely many. Yeah. Yes, yeah, since there's the branching because your dendrites are actually density branching. Yeah, so not not, not only they have infinity many branches, but you have yes. yeah, branching branch points everywhere, like the um Vazhevsky dendrite, mm -hmm. Vazhevsky universal dendrite, right? Right. Um We wanted to keep calling it a tree because that's what Kurzian and Pohans did. So just to kind of stay as much consistent as possible. Although one formula here it might be useful. When they initially introduced that, it was called um, strong dissipation. But then they realized that, um, like for instance, for the Hanon family, it's actually a large set of parameters for which Hanon maps are. Um, uh, dissipative in that sense, so they decided mild dissipation is better. And then I know that um, John Gook is also um, attending this talk, and I think he told me about two more names for that currently going on. So uh, I guess you know each time just you, you may want to check whether this is the same property. Um, okay. And then, okay, so here I didn't need that so much space because here is today's results. So I only need one more piece to introduce. Um, and that piece that, that we used is uh, the work that Nihal uh, Mishurevich and, and Sonia had. And this was on um, symbolic dynamics of Lozy maps.
Okay, so if you don't know what lossy map is, this is just a, a, a key to find version of the Hanon map. So L A D of X Y is equal to um, one plus Y minus A, and now instead of the X square, we put the absolute value of X B X. And so what you get is um, sort of like a broken line version of that other stable manifold for the Hanon map and so on. But one important feature there when you study it is that you can use for lossy maps um, the y-axis as the critical locus because this is where all the critical points come from. So, and, and this is very convenient, but of course, unfortunately, this is not present for the Hanon map. For the Hanon map, the y-axis doesn't really play any role. And so, when we initially um, also constructed these models, these models, we also had them for lossy maps, and um, we realize that having this y-axis as a critical locus, so as a place where all the critical points come from, um, is very useful, but not only as sort of loose points that you have, a counter set of points, but in fact, as sort of a separator that you can use for your symbolic coding. So, so here you can, you can use the symbolic coding. Um, you also have this kind of disk delta that is also formed by uh, a piece of the unstable manifold of a fixed point x that appear. And then um, you, have, you have a way of coding all the orbits. So here you put a plus and here you put a minus. And of course, then you have some points that are um, on the y-axis, but in fact, um, you can deal with this. So, so you can do something so that it's not too much a problem. So some of them will have two codes, but then it's okay. So, 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 so this, is, this is also for B orientation reversing, or does it work for orientation preserving as well? And is there any limitation on, on what A parameters you're dealing with there? Oh, uh, you're talking about lossy? Yeah, this was also preserved. Yes. So only they only have it for orientation reversing. They also have it for orientation reversing uh, lossy like maps, where you basically assume that you have some kind of I think the separatics or something they call it, which plays the role of the y-axis. Now for the orientation preserving case, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, there was no actually like a, a counterpart of Mishrevich's work. Uh, recently, my PhD student did it. It's sort of it's, it's, it's along the lines that Mishrevich did, but there are some differences as well. Uh, and, and differences are sort of similar to what you see for Hanon maps. And that is that for the orientation preserving case, um, sort of the, 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 the boundary of that forward invariant disk is no longer the unstable manifold of that fixed point X. Because that fixed point X is sort of, sort of buried here. Because what you have is that, um, Um, okay. Well, what you use is you use this other um, fixed point Y, and you look at the um, unstable manifold of it, and this one sort of starts approaching the uh, unstable manifold of X, which is sort of buried here, and and you know because of the eigenvalues that you have there. At the fixed point, you have sort of like a local rotation here. But still, the attractor is the closure of the unstable manifold of X. Okay, but, but there was no. Is there any limitation on what D, D has to be small or any B will work provided that there's a triangle? Here? Yeah. 
Um, so yes, yeah, so, so this happens for an uh, open set of parameters, uh, which is sort of like a triangle in the symbolic plane. There are some formulas, you know, one of them is where you have the, the, the hyperbolic plane and then, but it's a triangle basically. Like, I can't remember all the formulas, they're not difficult. Um, but um, I guess we have a B here, an A here, and then it's some, some kind of triangle like that. Okay, yes. Where as here, this positive Lebesgue measure set as we all know, it's kind of really kind of it's it's not really it doesn't contain any open set because densely you have these attracting periodic orbits for the head on. Right? Well, uh, this this positive measure set. I don't think this is positive Lebesgue two dimensional measure. Um, positive Lebesgue one dimensional measure of a parameters give for for which B exists. Yes, but I think. But I think I also seen it formulated this way. Okay, anyway, later on, I'll, I'll, I'll read a review of that paper and buy it. What well, well that petition? Okay, so um, let me tell you a little bit more about this piece now. Of all these things. Okay, so, so how how do we construct this screen for um, make a break? Yeah, I think so. It's 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 forty five. So I guess we should take the break now and then. Right. Okay. So ten minutes, ten plus the time, which is not more than fifteen minutes. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. And so um, I, I will uh, say a bit more about this. So um, once you have these conditions, um, you can consider gamma, which is a family of components. So gamma, gamma is connected Component. Okay, so for now I will I will now switch to the Hanon map. So D is this forward invariant disk. And for, for these parameters of the null map, um, you can just look at the pieces of the stable manifold of X. So, and this stable manifold of X is dense in the disk. So, so this is very useful. So, in fact, this construction of that of that tree has a lot of freedom, and and you know you can in various instances you can consider you know, some stable manifolds or all of them and so on. 
But what is important is that it satisfy these uh, three conditions that I will mention here. And for say one gallon parameters, you can simply uh, just consider the pieces from the stable manifold of that fixed point X. And this already gives you uh, pretty much everything that you need. So gamma, satisfies not only elements of gamma are otherwise destroying or coincide. Every gamma in gamma is a limit of elements, well, elements in gamma when it's accumulated. From all sides. Mm -hmm. Then, so how many sides can you have? Right, that's, a, that's an excellent question because we can have more than just two sides. So D is a closed deal screw? Yeah. I see. No, no, no. Well, thank you very much for asking this. So, Okay, imagine this. So you have your disk view for the handle. Then of course here you will have so that's your unstable, yes, and that's a piece of the stable. Here is your X. Okay. And so okay, like so basically you will have this sort of pattern here of of that stable manifold. And so, you know, you can even imagine for a moment that this will be tangential here. Okay. And now this will be accumulated here with some straight like this. I mean, sort of straight here, but also from here. And that is important to build that sort of connected tree. So also this example shows that, that the topology that will be determined by these pieces is not uh, consistent with the Hausdorff topology of these sets. The reason being, you have things approaching here, but they're actually far away because you also have this other side. Uh your question is it possible to have more than three sides? Uh, there is one piece touching the. So, a priori, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. So, a priori, yes. It's actually, so it, actually, it's a question we, we couldn't sort of answer. We're thinking we wanted to determine whether what is, because this will correspond to the branching, to the degree of, 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 of branch points, to the order, sorry, order. And so, right. So, here we see this. But of course, these things get much more complicated because um, now between these things, you have, okay, forget about this because then I have no space to draw. But, but now you can have these things as well. Right? Like going like this, and then so it's open or closed. Uh, D. D, D D itself is a closed disk, but it's forward invariant. I mean, this this piece stays, but then here things kind of enter. Okay, 
And then um, the, the third property that you use is that for every gamma in gamma, the connected components. Of um, we'll look at the three image F inverse of gamma intersection D are elements of gamma as well. So you want that to um, sort of define the the dynamics here. Okay. So are these conditions which you can pull from gamma or they fall from something? So so the so these are the conditions that follow from this definition of mm -hmm. strong dissipation, mild dissipation, whatever. Yes. Okay. And once you have that, you now consider all surfaces. Well, these are likely just uh, topological disks, but I mean for for Hanon, these will be some some kind of uh this topological disks but of course in general this this could have i guess some other shapes um, so you consider this set sn where sm is well s i guess where s is a surface bounded by finitely many elements to be gamma. Okay, so for instance, here on this picture, um, I guess this would be one element, this would be one surface in that set, this would be another. This would be another, but of course you can have any other options. Um, and then you want to introduce a surface inside of D. Mm -hmm. Is it inside D? Yes, yeah, inside of D. Yes. So the, that blue one stuck out. So that one. Sorry? That blue one there is kind of sticking to the bottom. Out. Oh, yeah. So that's good. I understand. It's, yeah. Thank you. Okay, and so, um, right, so I knew I needed SN because these are supposed to be in fact sequences already. So each SN is a surface. And now once you, so this construction is sort of like the prime ends. Um, so you need some equivalence classes here. So you say that, one sequence is less than or equal to another sequence S and prime. Well, if oh, and these are descending sequences of surface. I'm going to say that. Uh, so this surface is contained. In the previous one with its closure. Okay. And then now, first you compare two sequences. So this sequence is less than this sequence. If um, we can, there is an N such that the closure of SM is contained in 
SK prime. And so then you can say that two subsequences are equivalent. Of course, they can only have this and SN prime is less than or equal to SN. Okay, so finally, what you consider is the set of equivalence classes. What is this field Sorry? Yeah, it's closure. <laughs> it took me a little while. <laughs> this? Yes, the closure. I see. Okay. Do you prefer the bar? Do you prefer the bar? I do. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. So, so I mean, right. So, as I said here, the pieces of the stable manifold of that X are dense. The stable manifold is dense in the disk, and you consider the, these components. So, some of these equivalence classes will be just one element, one, one arc from that stable manifold. Because, of course, they are accumulated on, from each side, so you can intersect to just that single uh, arc. Okay, however, so you can sort of identify each such equivalent, I mean, some of the equivalence classes with these elements of gamma. But of course, it's not like the stable manifold fills the disk completely. So of course, sort of you have some loose space in there as well. So in such a case, you sort of want to look at, okay, so here we having like these straight pieces, yes. And, and so for instance, okay, like this could be our S1, but then, we make it a bit thinner, and that would be our S2. And then thinner and thinner. And, and at the end, we sort of, we have this, this abstract object that is sort of like, which is exactly the, the intersection, in fact. And I, just, I was just about to, to write that, that you can identify these classes with intersections of these surfaces. And, and well, you have this equivalence relation because, of course, nothing stops you from, from starting with, you know, this being S1 and th say this being S2 and then this being S3 and, and sort of approaching this starting from sort of different point, but then, you know, kind of the limit operation at the end will produce sort of the same equivalence class, the same object. Mm -hmm. And, and the reason we're doing it is because these stable pieces, as you iterate them up, they travel together, sort of. So, so if we quotient them, this doesn't disturb the dynamics. So it's sort of quotienting along the, the stable direction. Right, so then, then you have this closure of the intersection uh, 
of these uh, SNs. This is some kind of compact and connected set, a continuum. You can call it geometric realization. Okay, and so now the question is, so you have all these equivalence classes and now the question is about the topology on that set. Um, uh, is a class completely determined by this uh, uh, continuum? Yes. So it's uh, like in the uh, case of five ends, but if you have locally connected, so, um, you have a simple case, like a Jordan uh, or something. Yeah, so, like, so in the uh, locally connected case, these things, this intersect the points. In fact, here, there's also nothing stopping us from having a point. So like in particular, and, and, and actually this is a very good comment. Thank you for asking. So, you know, it could, it could be like this, that they will intersect just to a point. But in more general case, uh, say if, if you don't have mild dissipativity at all, is it possible uh, that, uh, uh, what I was saying, there will be no such one-to-one -one correspondence? Between uh, classes and uh, this continuum, uh, somehow. So, I think, like, so I'm not sure this will answer your question, but so, you know, say you have some kind of, um, some kind of um, attracting P on the coordinate, right? Say an attracting fixed point, then um, sort of here, you know, that's the, 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 the stable set would be two dimensional and it's sort of somehow lost in the whole set. So it's not really, you know, useful. And even if, if you know, it was like this, then you would do sort of changing this whole set and, um, there could be a lot of things that happen here, which after this painting would be lost. Right? Mm -hmm. So I guess in a sense, this, this I mean, from, from our perspective, this was sort of the limitation of having a, a similar result in, in a you know more general scope. If that's just the part of the basin of attraction of that point, then just collapse it. No problem. What, what could be happening there? You don't want to collapse. Like, uh, okay, like when, when you then try to conjugate it with that shared homeomorphism, right? Well, this can be conjugate. No, it's, uh, well, well, well I know, but like, you mean this case or this case when it's inside? Because when it's like inside, I mean, how would you? So now what will be important for the tree is that you have this, the separation topology that I'm about to, to explain. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just try to work with pictures now. So you have this, this, and you have these pieces. So when you start pinching these pieces to points, then, for instance, 
I'll say here you have another one. So it will be this point which separates this object here. Uh, well, in this object, this point separates these two points, right? So that's that's how you have that's 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 how you start having an arc here. But then here you have a different equivalence class, not, not well, not equivalence class in that sense, but you have a different class of of these things. And so, for instance, um, if I can take a different color. This doesn't separate this one and this one. So it has to be somewhere else and it has to be here. Okay. So that's, that's the topology of these things. Now, what is important in this construction um, that we did was that um, when you have this fixed point X here, like you have, so the one stable, it kind of goes probably to infinity, but you have this, First piece of stable, it goes like that. And then you start iterating backwards. And so when you iterate this, you know, it will start having some pieces in various places. And so all the branching actually comes from here. The way it happens is that. You want to con construct um, this critical locus that will play the role of the y axis. So you want to uh, construct a curve K, I probably should use a different color, orange is white. So it's the, the critical locus is an arc that contains the critical set. And what is useful in having such a critical locus is that it's not only just some counter set, but precisely when you start iterating backwards, you start having sort of three images of that. And then you can use this in the coding because when you start iterating backwards because the stable manifold of X is dense, this will also, the pre-images of that will also be dense. And so eventually any two points will be separated. And so when you go back forward, you see that they actually have at some point different coding. To construct this critical locus, um, we have to use this um, paper of Young and Wang. And this was about how uh, their critical set was constructed. So perhaps I should maybe open my pictures now, my presentations. Um, Turning off those lights anyway. How about turning off those lights anyway? Yeah, we can have the lights off. Okay, that's it. Yeah, 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 that's it. Y
Oh, yeah, those are this great. Second time around. Not, not that we're going to be able to see any pictures because it's going to come down. <laughs> Somehow. Look, well, there's not okay. a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What's this? <laughs> so this should be oh, this is on. Okay. Yeah, it's speedless. Oh, to load of this down. Mm -hmm. oh, today, oh. This is so good. I don't know. <laughs> right okay so yes yeah, so, uh, i guess this is so this is um, the stable and unstable manifold of Velozima computed. So here you can sort of see the nature of, of, of the stable manifold pieces, how, how they can form um, the fixed point. So, so this the, in, in blue, you see the, the unstable manifold of the fixed point for the lossy map. And so the fixed point is somewhere here. And then, um, you know, it starts extending and coming back. So even here, I was actually trying to, to compute as much as possible, but it, you know, if, if you add too many points then your computer starts going crazy. And, and so I wasn't able to obtain some of these things that I know that will go like this. But um, in fact, here we highlighted a region where it almost seems like you have a, a computer proof that the branching could be four. So the, the, the order of the branching point uh, could be four. Um, I'll again explain that after afterwards. But um, of course, you know, not, not a serious proof, but sort of some evidence that that possibly. So in this famous Williams' paper for hyperbolic attractor, the branching can only be uh, you know of order three. So it's either straight or, or three. But but here we actually don't know. Okay, so here you have this disk that I talked about, and then um, the piece of the uh, unstable manifold of X. So you see how. I don't, I don't think I, you, you sure not? Anyway, I'm not sure I, I agree with your statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's supposed to be diffeomorphic or something, but I remember Felix asked me during my previous talk some years ago, and I was like, hmm, maybe I got it wrong, but then I double checked and. Okay, so here you have the, the critical points uh, forming. Of course, the idea is that you know, the, the more you follow with the unstable, the more of them you get. And so if you're unfamiliar with how this works, um, one thing to keep in mind is that, okay, this is zero. This thing is orientation reversing. So because this is a fixed point, uh, things have to get reflected here. And this is the first image. Of that critical point. And so a critical point becomes this turn. So it's a turning point. And later we, we call it uh, post critical points. In the next iteration, this again gets flipped. So this is your, your second um, 
um, iteration of your critical point, and then then it gets flipped again. But because you have expansion here, you're already here. That's the third iteration, you know, and so on. And then it works like that with with all other critical points. So so the point is is you know comes from here from this critical set that you can uh, imagine as this this country set. This is what Wang and Yang proved. But then when you start iterating it, it 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 corresponds to these terms. And so the pruning from conjecture was about you know the question whether these turning points with their orbits, their coding, whether it determines completely everything, uh, all the dynamics in the map. Okay, so here you can see part of the construction of the critical locus. So um, we took advantage of the construction of that uh, critical set, which is a counter set in one young paper which is done by, by this method on that picture in the corner. So what you have is you have the theomorphic copies of the disk and in each approximation, so first you start with just some small delta that corresponds to, you know, here you would have zero because it's the quadratic map and then you have some small delta and first approximation would be just a set like that. And in the next approximation, you can imagine having two diffeomorphic images of a disk and their boundaries sort of going parallelly to the unstable manifold. And then, you know, it gets finer and finer and finer. What we had to tune a little bit was that their um, sides of, of these rectangles were outside of, of the attractor, but but you can fine tune it to make them pieces of the unstable. And so this way, in each step, you have only finitely many of these. And in between, you have these, these open spaces, which you can connect by arcs. And so in the limit operation, these things intersect to an arc, and that's your critical locus. So sort of this is like your y-axis from the lossy map. What is also here on this picture? But how do you find the points? D naught, two minus one, minus two, etc. I mean, so, so, so the way we did it, we we took the the Wang Yang result as given to us. So you already have that that critical set, which contains all the critical points. So, which takes care of the no, all the points where you don't have uniform yes. hyperbolicity, right? So in Benedict's Halston paper, it is written that the critical points lie on some curve K, but there's no proof of that. And um, when I visited Stockholm, Michael Benedict told me that this actually has to be proven. And also he, he pointed out to me that they don't, they don't consider all the critical points. So, so this, this progress was only made later by Wang and Yang. Now here you have these sets U1, U2, U3. Um, they are determined by, so a piece of these um, sets consists of the unstable manifold of X, like for U1. And then you have U2, it's sort of like, um, it's also like if you, if you think about accessibility of the attractor from outside. So these are sort of your canals in, in which you access. But then when you look at it closely, <clears throat> you realize that you, when, when, if you consider, for instance, here a piece of the unstable manifold of X, and you just consider the domain that is bounded by the unstable here and stable here. From here, it will move into U2, then it will move into U3, and so on. 
And because the, the boundary is just a piece of stable and unstable manifold of X, these things, uh, they are um, um, pairwise disjoint. And these are your wandering domains for these, um, for these maps with the strange attractors. No, the critical orbits here are always infinite. Mm -hmm. I think even in Benedict's Carlson paper, uh, it was it was said that that uh, it was the the critical orbit that was that was dense in the attractor. So, what, hmm? what are these? Right. So, so like on one hand side, they play no role because, okay, I mean, of course you could have this going like this. Okay. The point is that once we have this as an arc, we can use it in this topological construction because it will keep the pre images will keep separating the disk into pieces. And this allows you to do the, the coding. But not only coding, but also uh, control this. Um, because one, okay, one thing that you have to do there is you have to somehow connect the the coding and the needing sequences. So the needing sequences are just the codings of the the turning points, the critical orbits. But you have to somehow also connect that to this inverse limit description of the trees. And so the, this really kind of allows you to, to connect two pieces. So even that result of Mishurevich and, and Stimats for, for the lossy maps, this wasn't a characterization, this was only one way. But having now this description in terms of inverse limits of trees, you can actually connect also the other way. So, right, so with these orgs, you can, you know, in a sense, they are artificial. They, they allow you to, to sort of, uh, do it in a topological way. At the same time, the fact that they are outside of the attractor doesn't bother you because you only focus on what happens on the attractor. So it doesn't really mess with that. But as long as you can make sure that really these orgs don't, they don't intersect the attractor in, in some sort of bad way, right? Co coinciding with the unstable manifold or anything like that. Right, so here on this picture, you can sort of see one of those regions where, um, so everything starts from here. When you do the, the backward uh, iterations, here you have a representation of that, uh, of the first branching, and then going backwards from that builds all the branching for the entire, for the entire tree. So the, as a consequence of that, um, the endpoints and branch points of those trees, when iterated backwards, will all be converging to the fixed point X. So it, this corresponds to a, a fixed point in the, in the tree. Right. Um, I think I will move ahead. Okay, so here I can I can just just briefly mention that coding. Um, so we are on that unstable manifold of X, and we have these basic arcs. So basic arcs are arcs uh, whose endpoints are critical and post-critical points. So in especially you have Z0 here and um, Z1, 0 here. So that's that's your sort of, um, that's that's your first basic arc or zero basic arc. The word here is, is, is the empty set. Okay, this gets mapped then to, um, no, no, it's not about mapping. Here you have, um, I minus because on this side we we consider this sort of being the negative half plane, so we code with minuses. Uh, so okay, so that's like the the first 
order of those basic orgs. Then here you have the second order. So this is between um, this uh, turning point and a new critical point that you know just rises um, before you even reach uh, this turning point. And so when you have this basic arc I minus, then this gets mapped to, to this side, but it will get sort of chunked into two pieces because of that new critical point, right? So there you had Z0 and Z2. So this gets mapped to Z10. That's the iterate that C30. But because that new critical point arises, you get it split into the plus and minus points. So that's how you 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 introduce the, the next line. And then Okay, this now will get mobbed again over there. So now you will have these with, with words with, with three uh, signs. So minus, plus, minus, and minus, plus, plus. And now this gives you the decoding. So here is a sort of like a, a stretched version of that. So this is a continuous image of the real line. So here, you sort of stretch it out and then you look at these basic arcs and 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 and, and how they get mapped. But also you can just look at this folding pattern. So so as as uh, I don't know if I probably didn't mention that in the abstract, but the folding pattern completely determines the map. So it so two maps are conjugate, two head-on maps from this family that we consider are conjugate if and only if they have the same needing sequences, um, well, the same needing set, so all the needing sequences. And then uh, if and only if they have the same folding pattern. So a folding pattern is, is something that is represented here. So you put a one if this is a uh, post-critical point and you put a zero if this is a critical point. And now from that, and from the fact that you have an orientation reversing homeomorphism of that of a real line on that unstable manifold, you can read off how they are getting mapped. So it turns out that this completely determines the map. And, and so up to conjugacy, uh, this is a characterization. So here you have your fixed point X, and here you have the first critical point. And so this critical point gets marked here. So this is a post-critical point, that's why you have a one. And then this, you have a one. But then before reaching another post-critical point, you will have a new uh, critical point. And then you find that this has to go all the way here and so on. And similarly, you can build from this, this folding tree, I think I'm out of time. So um, I guess I'll be happy to explain that um, afterwards. And I will just stop at this point. Well, thank you very much. We have a question from Yang. Oh, well, the reaction was clapping. Uh, thank you, Jan. Uh, but I do have um, questions. Um, so I don't know how many I can ask because there's probably limited time. Uh, so I'll ask uh, the first one, which is uh, you, you said that at some point, um, the branchings can only occur through this uh, the critical curve. The branching. Yeah. Right, it, it, it corresponds. You know? hmm? Sorry? Could you say it again? So are you asking if, is it if and only if? Uh, well, no. So I mean, um, how do we know that that's the only place where, where the branching can happen? Right, so no, that, that's not my claim. 
My wow. claim is like so. Right. So maybe I, I misspoke, but what I meant was that you have the well, the dense branch. It comes from this. So only looking at that is enough to see that the tree is densely branching. Ah. And that's one thing, but also this critical locus mm -hmm. allows you to distinguish a special subset of the set of branching points and endpoints. Mm -hmm. And well, that set um, is important because, because that, that set is important for the needing sequence. And so, so, so having these two subsets, one of the branching uh, of the set of branching points and one of the set of endpoints um, allows you to, to to find that characterization and, and that connection to to the, to the needing set. However, for instance, if you have dense branching, then there will be uncountably many endpoints. So clearly, that's not the only mechanism. I, I hope I answered your question this way. Uh, well, okay, so. Um... So I, I was under the impression that to prove the pruning front conjecture, you have to, for example, exclude that there, well, you have to account for all the branchings. You have to account for all the foldings, right? So you don't have some unaccounted for folding going on elsewhere. Oh, the folding. No, the folding yeah. yeah, the folding is from the critical set. And the critical set, yes. So the critical set contains all the critical points. And then this is thanks to Wang and Yang. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so outside of the orbits of the critical set, you have uniform hyperbolicity. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jonathan, so you can see correctly in the end, given you the term of a conjugacy between two and in example. Like, so the result says that, you know, having the needing sets is as good as having a needing sequence for uh, unimodal maps with negative Schwarz and derivative, right? Now, if you're asking if I know, for instance, how to now take, you know, some parameters and turn them into needing sequences, I don't know it at this end. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I think it's the first result that, that gives you any sort of tool to distinguish, um, you know, two Hanon maps, uh, to my knowledge. Trying to imagine what is happening on trivial examples, like mm -hmm. mentioned Williams of Rapport, yes. which is Two dimensional colors, the fact of homomorphism, and for the place of this, you have toes minus an inlet bar. That's forward invariant, you obtain some strength of raptor. Complement of this thing, interval going to the settled point about the standard direction. And it's modeled on the set of unstable, uh, stable pieces. What you do, it is branched many of to blue circles. Analogous uh, is quick in mm -hmm. So, so I, mean, I think it is good to imagine. Right? And there you, you have branched points, but you don't have any singularity. Right, because you have, I mean, as long as you have uniform hyperbolicity. Yeah, right. Nevertheless, I'm putting some questions. Yes. Right, right. On the graph, but the graph is a finite number of Yes. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for mentioning that. So, also, we showed that, in fact, for this, so you cannot have finitely many branches. So this family of Hanon maps, it has to be infinitely many branch points. So in that sense, it's sort of optimal. There was an old result of, of Marcy Barge saying that in some cases you cannot represent with with you know finite branch with only finitely many branch points. 
but um, it was for some case of, of phenomenons. Yeah, so I guess the motivation was really, so in fact, I must say that, you know, really looking at this sort of was, a, for me, was a product of a, a conversation I had with Sylvain and, and, and then what Sonia was doing, so that's how we started to look at it. And, and it, was, it, was, it was a talk of Sylvain, I think, in 2019 in Dubrovnik. And he mentioned, oh, you know, what we're doing is really just, just sort of like in Williams. And then, of course, he doesn't remember saying this to me, but <laughs> well, I'm happy he did. And, and so I started to look at that and I thought, oh, so, you know, with that connection, it seems something I can start, you know, looking at. So, so I, I think it does come from, from this, this one dimensional reduction. I think it makes sense not to speak about the disk of but about some other object like torus with minus and this, or hmm? plane without four disks. Like yes. Like no, yes. sphere like four disks. Mm -hmm. Well, right. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of these pieces. And you have the homotopy also, like this, like for your disk, you don't get mm -hmm. interesting places. We, we did focus on, on the Hanon family for now and, and lossy, you know, once folding. But I mean, this, this whole sort of mild dissipation notion, this is, this is very general just for surfaces. And so uh, there's, I think there's a lot of work that, that people can do. And I think this, this could be very but useful. But I think, you know, the parameters that you're dealing with, you would have to have infinitely made this, but densely, you know. Yeah, 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 like this. But uh, I thought, I am trying to understand what's happening. That's very classic. There are no singularities. Yeah, yeah, so, Jungkook is still having his hand up. I don't know if this is just left over or... No, um, well, I don't know. Uh, so, I, I, yes, I, I did have another question. Um, so the, the critical set is recurrent. Right? Asking. Jungkook is asking. He's asking if the critical set is recurrent. Right, so, so here... So here you have that this this critical set. Now you don't you don't really have that that property that you know some forward orbits will get closer and closer and closer. You know you don't, don't you don't have that for these parameters. So for these parameters, the critical set is not recurrent. Is that what you're saying? I, well, depending on what you mean by recurrent. Oh, just um, uh, the uh, if you take a point in the critical set, then it comes back to the critical set arbitrarily close. Infinitely often. No. No. Uh, so that doesn't happen. No. Oh, I, I thought that um, the oh. Wang Young um, in the stretch detractor that it was it was recurrent. Okay, hold on. So let me think. So it will not. I mean, it will never sort of come back to the to the critical set. But um, but you asking if it will be. May, yeah, I think, yeah, I see, probably yes. I think yes. Yes, okay. Um, so, if it is not recurrent, it is almost hyperbolic. Right, okay. Um, so then I, I thought, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't there be some kind of geometric complications if um, you do return, uh, if a critical, post-critical point did return? So it would be something like, a pullback of this critical curve coming back kind of tangent to itself when you pull back, like these kinds of complications. So, so are you asking if in a different setting there would be a problem? No, no I, I, well, I'm, I'm um, asking if you can rule out that this happens. Uh, and if not, like how, uh, why, if you can give me some idea why it's not a, an issue. Right, so I think what you want to make sure is that that you know you will not return to that critical set, and and that's what happens here. Oh, really? Okay. All right. So, so for any critical point um, z i that you had in your picture, um, after after it leaves the critical point, it stays some fixed epsilon away from the critical set forever. 
It never returns to the set. So, it, well, it never maps back, but it could come close, yeah? Well, I, I guess in some sense it has to. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. If not, there are few such parameters and they are like we should average. Yeah, this, this construction of, of Wang and Yang for stretch attractors, you sort of start in one dimension by having a map on the circle that, that, that has this, you know, the, any point from the critical set is a Mishravich point, indeed. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of transition to two dimensions embedded. But it's, of course, this was, this was just supposed to generalize the approach of Bennix and Carlson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. E excuse me. May I say something, uh, yes. Sonia Stimitz? Yes, please. Yes, I, I, I want just to comment on this question that parameters are chosen in the way that when critical points go close to the critical set, it uh, does it very, very slow. So critical points will come close to some other critical points, but that will not happen very fast. This, uh, this uh, returns will be uh, uh, slow in the way that you always have some uh, neighborhood around the set when it, you're, you are going back so that in this young picture, this, this uh, rectangle has some uh, width delta, which is uh, smaller than, which is always without any image of critical point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore we don't have problems. If, because these uh, parameters in one young set are such that you you have this slow slow recurrent, if I can say in this way. Could, uh, could it sorry, help? Could you clarify what what is this rectangle delta that, that you mentioned? Uh, this yeah. uh, uh, gray one. Mm -hmm. So you you see this uh, in this gray region. Q K minus one. There are no any return uh, of f to the negative l if l is less than k minus one. Mm -hmm. And then in this uh, dark gray region, which is qk, in this region, there are no pre images of order l when l is less than k. So you will have returns, but before that, you will be able to have these uh, rectangles without any return, smaller than level of this Q, mm -hmm. QK. And therefore, you somehow keep uh, these neighborhoods of critical points without returns very long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, more questions? Can I ask, can, is there time for me to ask a question? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you for a nice talk. Um, I have a question that is, um, uh, for example, if you uh, make this invariant disk rounded and make it like a circle, okay? And then uh, instead of uh, considering the elements of gamma, uh, take a line segment that has the same uh, endpoints of that element of gamma. Uh, uh, instead of taking uh, curved uh, lines, uh, take uh, exactly the straight line between the endpoints of each uh, uh, connected component of a stable manifold. And this gives you a shape in the circle uh, and its interior. 
and um, uh, that have some open regions like polygons. Uh, and uh, I'm one, I want to ask if two uh, Henon maps that are not conjugate can have the same shape. Or in other words, if it is possible to characterize the Henon, uh, the Henon maps by these kind of shapes. Right. So, but how do you define this shape? Uh, yes, I, I gave a rough definition that uh, you have some uh, segments of stable manifolds, okay? Oh. And uh, I, I uh, first, and you have an invariant disk, okay? Uh, by homeomorphism, make it a, a, make it a round disk send it to unit disk by homeomorphism. So, and the endpoints of uh, 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 connected components of stable manifolds are going to two points on the uh, unit disk, on the boundary of unit disk, and connect uh, uh, these two points by a line segment inside the unit disk, okay? okay. So you will have some, so, uh, and so you will have some, uh, it is some kind of, a, uh, or, or if you want, you can connect them by uh, geodesic in Poincaré, uh, Poincaré uh, disk, and it will become a lamination of Poincaré disk. Or uh, if you don't, you can uh, look at it uh, in a, another way, uh, just connecting, uh, connecting two points by a, a straight uh, line segment. And so uh, you will have, um, at the end, you will end up with some, uh, uh, some a picture like this is you, uh, the line segment covers some uh, open regions and uh, do, do not cover some other open, uh, open regions. You will have some polygons which are not covered by line segments and uh, some places are covered. Uh, right. I don't know if. Right. I... So, so I don't know if I will answer your question, but but in in this setting that we consider, we have a denseness of of homoclinic points. So and and the stable manifold of X is dense, and so. Yes, I know uh, the stable manifold are dense, but if you take one stable manifold and put uh, the line segment. Uh -huh. uh, that connect them, connect these uh, the endpoints uh, on the boundary. Then you may not be dense anymore. These these segments may not be dense, but uh, these segments do not intersect uh, themselves uh, as um, uh, they inherit this property that they do not intersect each each other. But still, um, they may not be dense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think for now, um, so I, it's difficult for me to to imagine the the process that you want to do. So it's hard for me to to answer that question. But I'll I'll try to think about your question. Okay. 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 So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for questions. So let's send the speaker again. Thank you.